Today I'm going to perform an extraction on lavender. It's already been pre-ground up in a Vitamix dry, dry blade blender. And uh, these are some of the various things we extract from. This is comfrey leaf already ground up. These are rose petals, rosemary, and saw palmetto berries. You can extract the oil or the chemicals or both from these, this variety of plant material using this extractor tank and column and this recovery tank and if you don't want to add anything to your butane to participate in the extraction but you still want after your butane has been recovered you don't want this gooey mass in the bottom of your tank you might add a transport solvent and so what I do is I add a little bit of secondary solvent to this tank prior to getting started and I just added 50 milliliters and you can use alcohol, naphtha, acetone, oil, anything that will keep that in a solution so that you can easily pour it out. And that will remain in that tank after the butane has been recovered out of that tank and back into this tank after the process completes. Okay, we're going to extract some lavender. And this is a bag of un or whole lavender flowers. And we're going to fill this up with two and a half ounces. So I'm going to try to get two and a half ounces into this space. And so what I'm going to do is I've got to grind this up in this dry container from a Vitamix. And I usually grind it at about speed eight for maybe a minute or less. Okay, it looks like we got about 2.6 ounces. It's what I pre-weighed before I started blending it. And uh, this is about what it looks like. And we're going to put all of this into this and before I do I'm going to take this steel wool and I'm going to place it into the bottom of this and I'm going to use this one and a quarter inch dowel rod to tamp that down flat get a funnel system that I've trimmed the end off of to place on the top of the column and then I'll begin to pour about one third of this material in at a time Just to show you how tightly I pack this. That filled all the way to the top. I mean, I put some weight on it. And I repeat that until I get it full. For the top, after I get this filled, as you can see, I got it all in there with a little space left over. It's pretty tightly packed. It's actually very, very aromatic. A uh, very strong smell since the uh, since it was ground up with a blender. I take this, roll it up into a ball, shove this right here into the top. Make sure no pieces of steel wool are laying over the side. And if you're wondering why I'm using steel wool instead of some lab grade filter and that's because I've used those before and this just works better. So that seals this off so that you can blow this out and now you're ready to put your o-ring on and then place your lid on. You need to lubricate your o-ring before you get it on so you can use Dow Corning high vacuum grease which is what we use in our lab or you can use this safflower oil or corn oil or olive oil or whatever you choose. Since I have this here, I'm going to use this. I'm just taking a tiny, tiny amount and putting it on my finger and dragging the O-ring through my finger like this. And then I just place this on like this, make sure it falls into the groove. Do not thread or put sealant on these threads. And if you put this lid on while this is cold and it's got condensation here and then you freeze it later, it will not come off very easily. So once you get this here and it meets the O-ring, as you can see, it's spinning the column. You just give it a little turn like that and it's sealed. Now you place this on top of this tank. So now you've got the column filled with lavender placed on the top of the extractor tank. You put the clamp around it. You don't need to lubricate that o-ring because it doesn't twist against any metal. It just lays flat and it has a flat to flat surface. You tw tighten this up as tight as you can get it with your fingers. 
and now you're ready to extract. I like to take notes on my weights and my volumes and everybody should do that if they want to be safe. So what we have here is a full tank, this one, and it's been filled with butane and the amount of butane that I filled it with brought the weight up to 2165 from an empty weight of 1790. 1790 from 2165 equals 375 grams. So that's the amount of butane that I have in here by gram weight. If I want to convert that into volume, which I do, I want to divide 375 by 0.577 and that equals 650 milliliters. So I have 650 milliliters of butane in this tank to extract with, which gives me a 50 milliliter area of space for my air cushion so that I'm not hydraulically filled. The remarkable thing about this extractor is it allows you to extract using hot or cold or low pressure or higher pressure and you create these pressure differentials in these tanks and that's how you force the solvent to flow from this tank through this tightly packed plant material and exiting out into this tank with the oil or chemical that it extracted out of the plant. And it's not going to flow through here without some kind of pressure differential and this pressure differential is created by temperature differentials. So what we're going to do to do an extraction today is we're going to do a room temperature extraction and I'm going to place this tank in ice water to bring the temperature down which will also bring and you can watch this if it hasn't dropped already it has zero pressure now but it'll be lower than the pressure that's in this tank so now to extract you just a single unit push it down until you hear that pull this retaining ring down drop this in until it stops let go of the retaining ring push that until that click. The temperature of this has been dropped. The temperature of this is relatively higher than this temperature. So this ball valve you open and this ball valve you open and then the fluid starts to flow through here based on a vacuum. Now this shouldn't take more than a couple of minutes to extract like this and if you wanted to go slower you could bring this temperature down less so more cold equals more vacuum and higher speed extraction another way that you can do an extraction which would actually increase the efficiency of your extraction is instead of reducing the temperature of this tank to draw the fluid into it you can remove this from the ice water and place this tank into about a hundred to hundred and ten degree temperature water which will raise the pressure of this tank now, the higher the temperature, the faster the speed. Don't go above 110, that's, that's the max you need to go to. It'll increase the pressure in here about 25 to 30 PSI, so lower will be a lower pressure increase. Once the pressure is increased in this tank by warming it and you assemble it, you open the ball, ball valves the same way and the pressure will push this solvent through this plant material. And if the fastest I've done it is in about a minute and that was at about 110 and it depends on how tightly packed this is and also how finely ground your plant material is. Now keep in mind this is going to be an efficient extraction process so it's going to get a lot more properties out of the plant. Now it's been about three minutes and I just took this tank off to weigh it and about a one-third of the solvent has passed into this plant material which means it's probably just now started to drip out of the bottom of the column into this empty tank. If I wanted to soak this in the solvent at this point, this is when I would take this whole system, invert it over, close these ball valves first, and then allow the, sol the solvent that's in here to just completely dissolve and soak over a period of time anything that's inside of this column. And then at the time that you are finished letting that soak, you turn this back over and you open the ball valves and you complete your extraction process. But in this example today, we're just going to continue to let it flow out. Okay, it's been about 10 minutes and this tank is empty. So I'm going to disconnect it and show you the proper way to do that. The first thing you do is you close this ball valve on the top. That allows any liquid that's remaining in here to flow out. You give that about 5 or 10 seconds. And then
then you close this bottom ball valve. And then you just disconnect it. 